This is a video lecture on inguinal canal. Inguinal canal or groin area. We are going to discuss some of the surgical anatomy of inguinal canal. The inguinal canal has got a number of boundaries. It boundaries uh, which can be discussed are anterior then you got floor if you have a floor you should have a roof and if you have an anterior boundary you should have a posterior boundary Now where does the inguinal canal lies in the abdomen? Inguinal canal lies in the abdomen right lower down between this point which is known as anterior superior iliac spine anterior superior iliac spine a very easily palpable bony landmark on the anterior side of the iliac crest and pubic symphysis. Pubic symphysis is in the midline. So this is the part pubic symphysis, a lower part. Now the let's draw this in detail. We got anterior superior iliac spine here. anterior superior iliac spine and we got pubic symphysis here now just on the lateral side of the pubic symphysis is a pubic tubercle pubic tubercle pubic pubic tubercle Just over here, P big to buckle. Now the inguinal ligament extends from inguinal ligaments extends from the anterior superior like a spine up to the pubic tubercle. This is the extension of the inguinal ligament from anterior superior like spine up to the pubic tubercle. Now this inguinal ligament is nothing but the lowermost fiber of the external oblique aponeurosis. External oblique aponeurosis. or what you can say is the internal inguinal ligament is the lower most free border of the external oblique muscle which is aponeurotic in this part of the abdomen so the floor is formed floor of the inguinal canal is formed by the inguinal ligament. This is the floor and the anterior boundary anterior boundary is formed by the external oblique muscle and this has got a defect on the medial side it's a, it's a ring and this ring is attached to pubic tubercle on the lateral side and pubic symphysis on the medial side and this ring is known as the external ring
Now we come to the roof. Again our anterior Achilles spine, inguinal ligament. The roof is formed by internal oblique and the transverses abdominus fibers which are arising from the lateral two thirds of the inguinal ligament and these are curving fibers they curve medially internal oblique and transverses abdominus they curve medially and get inserted on the pubic tubercle by a common insertion, conjoined tendon. Conjoined means joined together. Conjoined tendon. The internal oblique fibers and transverses abdominis, which are arising from the lateral tutors of inguinal ligament, they form the roof and curve medially to get inserted into the pubic tubercle by a common tendon which is known as conjoined tendon conjoined tendon so that forms the roof the posterior wall posterior wall is formed by transversalis fascia and this has got an opening it is formed by transversalis fascia this is transversalis fascia and there is an opening which is known as the internal ring this opening is known as the internal ring This is this is the internal ring. That's the internal ring, or internal or deep ring. And this opening is midway between the anterior superior leg spine. And the pubic tubercle, and behind this transversalis fascia, or more posterior to transversalis fascia, would be the peritoneum. So the inguinal canal extends from the internal ring up to the external ring. It's about four centimeters in length, and lies about one point two centimeters above the inguinal ligament, and what it gives rise to is the uh, what it gives passage to is the cord structures spermatic cord structures spermatic cord uh, pampiniform plexus testicular artery and vas deferens they come out through the internal ring traverses the inguinal canal and comes out through the external ring to descend into the scrotum now just medial to this is an artery which is known as the inferior epigastric artery and this inferior epigastric artery enters the rectus sheath and you get a triangle this is the triangle formed by the lower border of the inguinal ligament by the inferior epigastric artery laterally and by rectus sheath medially and this triangle is known as Hazel-Beck's triangle Hazel-Beck's triangle formed by the inguinal ligament by inferior epigastric artery and the rectus sheath a direct hernia 
is weakness and arises from the Hasselbeck's triangle and indirect hernia arises from here.